Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to a Luthiers Teardown and this is in collaboration with Great Guitar Giveaway and Dorset Guitar Museum and today we do have a great guitar. This is a 2012 Fano Sonic Sphere. I keep on wanting to call it the Retro Sphere for obvious reasons and uh, the second I saw this thing pop up on Reverb. I had no choice but to put in a crafty offer. I didn't even spot the coolest thing about it, which was the acrylic uh, sort of resin core. Very light, uh, we'll, we'll weigh it later. I'm gonna take this guitar apart, figure out what's going on. First of all, what's happening with these switches? We've got a volume, a tone, and then two, three position mini sliders the neck is a little bit chunky for my for my liking but we've got a very cool very cool sort of uh, metallic orange or pearlescent orange paint on here handmade in arroyo grande california usa number 57 491 essentially a wooden neck with a hollow acrylic body and Unfortunately, they call them tone plates. Anytime somebody puts the word tone in front of anything on a guitar, I immediately feel that I should be screaming foul. And bearing in mind that this is now a 10 year old guitar, the aluminum has been anodized properly because there are very few scratches on it. It feels, it feels great. Very lightweight. I love this headstock. I'm genuinely, genuinely in love with this guitar. Let's take her apart and actually see what makes it tick, shall we? Nice rosewood fretboard. These inlays are polished, polished aluminium or steel or something like that. Those are metal, not mother of pearl. Lola P90s. Super cool orange sparkle thing. And uh, well, let's start with the good stuff. I love the edge. And this wasn't actually photographed in the, uh, uh, the reverb listing. Barrel jack. Some people don't like barrel jacks. Let me know what you think of them and, and, and why. Try and convince me that they suck. I love the screws holding everything together. I really do. I think that's cool. Three body stringing. Tunematic. And we're good. So this is interesting, you've got a volume, you've got a tone, you've got pickups on and off, and you've got an out of phase thing. It's gonna be interesting finding out how exactly that works. Fano branded stuff. Very cool finish. So here we go, a multitude of screws and and coolness before we get stuck into this do not forget that you need to follow the link in the description below to go to greatguitargiveaway.com uh, to enter yeah with a chance to win this beastie for yourself it's got to be done and i think there's currently a free Liz pull up for grabs as well It's a pretty cool keyhole set up there. These frets are, now it's an older guitar, so yes, it's entirely possible that uh, somebody else has done something here, but they are very, very nicely done. Those fret ends are beautiful, supremely comfortable. The side of the fretboard's been rolled off a little bit. This has been made very well. Okay, so it's a shorter scale length. I think it's a Gibson scale. It's got a tiny amount of back bow. It's a really nice truss rod, actually. Very smooth. Okay, so it looks like what we've got is some built-in fall away. At the end of the fretboard here, the fretboard itself falls away a little bit, which is fine. Let's check the frets out. Ah. See, even this guitar needs a fret level crown and polish. 
Josh, your next job. <laughs> yeah, so while I'm experimenting with the um, seeing what's going on inside, there's a couple of high frets here. It's just par for the course. When you've got a guitar that is made out of wood, things move. Uh, and over time, stuff happens. So, yeah, this isn't like this out of the factory, uh, l like, for example, that uh, Fender Meteora we had recently that was just diabolical out of the factory. These are little machine screws. Of course they are. They're going into uh, tapped aluminium. Aha. I love this material. It is so cool. So cool. I need to take this off. Okay, thumb underneath the neck, push against there. Okay, we're out of the wood. And this is the problem, that aluminium is still attached to this neck. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Look at that. So it's, it's not only that it's machined, it's that it's machined very cleanly. It's possible you can see the, how matte the inside finish is from the outside, but it's a very even bit of machining and it doesn't look bad. And obviously we've got the raw um, aluminium on the inside that uh, is straight off a, say 320 grit random orbital sander. It's pretty damn cool. Number 47, number 47. <laughs> number 86. <laughs> Maybe that's why the neck wasn't quite fitting. So I mean, this is all fairly standard. Okay, so we've, we've, got, a, we've got a pair of lollers in there. While we're about it, let's just take the whole thing off. Loller. 2011 km. This whole thing has just been machined so cleanly. The funny thing is there's very, very little involved in this pickup. <laughs> it's not that much in there. There we go. And that's that. So ground, live, it's simple. So this wiring, this is interesting. You've got a very basic, very, very basic volume tone. And then here, in the center, both pickups are off. On the outside, the pickup is on. And then if the other switch is off to the other side, it puts them out of phase with each other. So that, and that will get you the same sound, I think. And that's both pickups. And <laughs> that's neither pickups. Uh, I'm not sure I like that. There's something satisfying about that noise, though. So as I'm putting these pickups in, a student's just walked in and said, oh, that looks laser cut or maybe water jet. And I 100% agree. If you look at the curves in here, that's not, that's not a CNC machine. This section here, the, it's a blind cavity that doesn't go all the way through. That's been machined out. That here, the neck pocket, you can see the, the witness marks from the CNC machine. And in fact, the, <laughs> the edges of that are even cleaner than that. So altogether supremely cool. And I wish it was mine to keep. So all of that's fun inside. You can see that's got a right old point to it. You can also see 
where somebody's gone in with a with a, a bastard cut file and uh, filed that away and just not filed it enough. So I'm going to attack that with a, a finer cut file and uh, and finish their job for them. Crowding file should do it actually. Just very gently. And I do it. The, the radius in the cavity and the radius on the neck don't quite match up, but uh, yeah, that's not too much of an issue. Let's get it back together again, shall we? Bye bye, you cool, cool thing. I genuinely think that, uh, well, I think that what they've had to do is machine the round external of this guitar shape with the aluminium plates intact, intact, already fitted. Otherwise, they, they just wouldn't be able to get such a, a lovely, beautiful curve. I love the fact that I'm going into little uh, tapped holes here. It, uh, yeah, that makes me happy. All right, let's stick some bolts in the angry robot's eyes. So cool. While Josh is sorting out some other things, I'm actually going to start the process of this uh, level crown and polish. You don't need to see the whole thing. You've seen us do this a million times. I have already set the neck as straight as I can get it. I am going to uh, hit the top of the frets with a permanent marker. I'm going to crown them. I am going to level them all the way around. I'm going to level them. Then I'm going to crown them. Uh, polish fine stuff, master fretboard off, buff on a machine. By that point, I suspect Josh will be doing the work, but uh, well, here we go. In the end, they're gonna be supremely shiny, supremely comfortable, and uh, yeah, it's a world-class fret job because it's what we do with all of these guitars. Yep. Feels weird, I'm talking to you all sort of leaning over -y and stuff. Now the fret ends are great, so I'm actually going to mask it off from the beginning, which isn't the way I normally do it with rosewood fretboards. These were so, so close that uh, I actually don't need to crown them. I've taken a minuscule amount of material off the top uh, uh, to the point that the polishing action alone is going to round uh, what has happened over. So we've double checked with the fret rocker. Everything's nice, done, dusted. I just need to polish. So that's making this job even easier, which is good.
beautiful. <laughs> So I've got this one up at 3600 RPM. At home I tend to use Jewelers Rouge. But in this case, in this case I'm using uh, Menzerna number no. 4 which is uh, for polishing uh, guitar finishes, lacquers and things like that. And it is lovely. I do wonder how they've managed to get these super shiny fret dots. It implies that they've buffed it on the fretboard, but the fretboard itself isn't hasn't been buffed. So, uh, yeah, interesting. On to the fretboard and finish cleaner. This gets rid of any excess polishing compound and uh, just cleans up whatever you've got going on prior to applying the fretboard restorative which is the oil. We find that a two-part solution is far better uh, most commercially available uh, cleaners and uh, and the like don't end up actually restoring anything on your fretboard uh, they might clean it but they don't add any nourishment to the fretboard So this is a thicker oil, it needs to sit on there for a little bit while it soaks in, five or ten minutes. Ten minutes later, wipe any excess off and this is going to last ten times longer than the other, other options. Well, that was easier. <laughs> nice. This might be the coolest production guitar I have uh, experienced. Find me in the comments. Nut width 43.4, so fairly standard. 12th fret 52.3. 56.1, so slightly wide ish, I suppose, down there. But uh, what I'm interested in is this neck feels fairly chunky. So at the nut, it's 22.3 millimeters, which is. I suppose two millimeters thicker than I personally would prefer. Yeah, 25.6. This is, this is, it's not an uncomfortable neck by any means. But you know that you're holding something, which is sort of a bit of a dichotomy because the body here, the body's only 30, oh, oh. Wow, my guess was uh, eight tenths of a millimeter out. It is 29.2 millimeters thick. And I think that is a perfect thickness for a guitar body. All the best things about a cool vintage 60s guitar, such like we're collecting uh, for Dorset Guitar Museum, with these thin bodies with surface mounted pickups and cool, strange tremolos, etc., melded with modern manufacturing and materials. I think it's cool. I think it's pretty, pretty damn cool. So what is that? It's just a fairly standard style. 
Viste. So the fretted note is uh, flat, so we need to make the string a little bit shorter by bringing, bringing the saddle towards the nut. Spot on. I've had this Peterson tuner for most of my career now. Very big strap buttons. What we've got here is standard volume and tone and some variable toggles. It's weird. So this is my neck pickup. Nice volume. You know what the tone does, don't you? So that's quite cool. Uh, that's the neck, and this is the bridge. Oh, I like me a good P90, I really do. But, so the interesting thing is, here's, here's your neck again. And we've got this switch all the way up. And with the switch all the way down, it's the same sound. See? Same with the bridge. But with the other switch in the opposite position, Suddenly we've got them out of phase with each other. And if you've got them in the other opposite position, it's the same out of phase sound. Oops, sorry. I didn't quite go all the way with that uh, neck pickup there. Ah. You see what I mean? Twice now, by mistake, I've not gone all the way. Uh, now, you do have a cool... Uh, you've got a sort of a kill switch thing going. And of course, with both of them up, or both of them down, at that point, you've got both pickups. I think that this switching system, while it looks cool and retro, and is actually relatively, well, it's flexible enough, it just is a little bit clunky and weird. But what I've just realized is that this chunky neck is perfectly fine. And in the hands of a proper player, I think this beastie could be uh, really rather awesome. I genuinely think that this is one of the coolest or cooler guitars that I've ever seen in my life. I enjoy what you can do with it. I would rather have a standard three-way switch and then a, a, a little one of these uh, changing the phase. I just think that that would be probably a little bit easier to use on stage if I was ever in that situation. Seven pounds, four ounces. I mean, that's not bad, is it? 3.3 kilograms. She's a beast. I love this guitar. Check out the link in the description below to get over to greatguitargiveaway.com where you can buy a ticket 
to win the prize draw that is this instrument. Uh, it comes in an incredible case. I genuinely can't believe that, that I'm allowing this one to go. It's so cool. It looks so cool. It feels so cool. But, you know, we need to buy other cool guitars for Dorset Guitar Museum. And uh, that is what this is being done in aid of. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about this beautiful instrument. Uh, only if you think it's a beautiful instrument. If you disagree, then I just have no interest in your opinion whatsoever. Questions, comments, criticisms, I want to hear it all in the comments below. Click like, subscribe, see you soon. B-roll, where's that cool case? That's what you want. <laughs>